evening, everybody. Welcome to our third monthly advocacy forum. Before we get started this evening, I would like to acknowledge the traditional lands on which we're on. Where Death Victoria works here on Nam, within the Wadjuri country. Um, the Kula Nation uh, are the traditional custodians of this land, and I would like to acknowledge their elders both past, present, and emerging. Hello everybody, I would also like to acknowledge um, deaf advocacy leaders who have worked tirelessly for our community over many years to preserve our culture and language. Deaf Victoria was founded by volunteers who set, uh, used their time to advocate for the betterment of our community. And here at Deaf Victoria, and our team and our board are very proud to continue to work in that legacy. So this evening we will be talking about health access. Our previous advocacy forums have spoken at length about experiences and tips that people have had. So this evening we'll be doing something a little bit differently. We know that we have spoken a lot about health access within our community. So tonight we're going to be talking about the barriers that are out there and how best to navigate around them. Deaf Victoria is very proud to launch our project, the Deaf Advocacy Health Advocacy Project. Um, speaking about the um, systemic changes that we're able to use to help navigate these barriers. So, hopefully everybody is feeling comfortable, rugged up at home, a nice cup of tea, and um, uh, ready to get the night started. So if you are watching through Zoom, there is a chat function. However, it's best to ask the questions through the Q&A function. Those watching through Facebook are able to add their comments on Facebook or type directly to So, without further ado, I would like to invite our president, Kathy Clark. Um, Kathy will speak to the background of the project, so I'm very excited to see you over to you, Kathy. Hello, everybody. Well, thanks so much. I too am very excited to be here tonight. I'm very pleased to have the support of our funders, the Department of Fairness, uh, Families and Housing, DFFH, previously called DHHS. So DFFH have funded the project to enable us to do an in-depth research and analysis, develop various resources, and receive community feedback. We really want to acknowledge our um, grant coordinator, Ashley Heenan, who has been responsible for uh, liaising with us through the FFH. I would also like to acknowledge uh, people here from Expression Australia, the Health Issues Centre, the Alfred Health Centre, Aslia, Vic slash Taz. They have been our project partners throughout, um, so hopefully some of you are here this evening, and if you are, I'd like to acknowledge it. Throughout the project, Deaf Victoria has um, been working with Expression Australia who have their own project called the uh, Deaf Regional Health Project, which is funded through the NDIS. The projects do have some similarities and a bit of overlap, so both organisations thought it best to work together. Our project has wrapped up, however, Expression Australia's project is continuing, so there's plenty of opportunity to provide uh, information and feed into one another to really assist the project grow and develop. Deaf Victoria have been uh, working for a very long time, 2014 and 15, we have been investigating into the health sector as well. So we've had an opportunity in 2014 to do analysis and really work out what the issues are that deaf and hard doing face um, when they're getting care throughout services, whether that be interpreting or whatever it might be. Um, Melissa Hale, the previous uh, manager of Deaf Victoria, was responsible for that project and it really led and fed into the project that we um, have been working on now. We've been able to work with the Victorian Equal Health and Opportunity Commission um, to have some discussions about mental health. Um, and then in again 2018, we've had many opportunities to look into this area. Deaf Victoria, Deaf Victoria has seen healthcare as a priority issue for our advocacy 
often we see deaf people facing barriers in the health system. These issues are happening time and time again. We're hoping through the project we are able to uh, develop some resources and some information and provide better access for our community within the hospital and healthcare setting. Also to empower deaf people to be able to self-advocate and navigate any issues that they should face. The project involves a number of different aspects. A literary review, which is uh, a matter of looking at various different resources out there. An 80 page review has been developed, looking into what information is existing within the community and uh, really putting that together, putting that to government, policy makers, decision makers, other organisations, for them to look at and really understand the issues that deaf people face within the healthcare setting. Another 24 page final report uh, works concurrently with the literary review. So we've received a number of different uh, suggestions and ideas for improvements. So they're both key reports. And the improvements that have been suggested are uh, further advocacy, better advocacy for the deaf community, uh, training, information. These really help Deaf Victoria to envision what resources we need to develop to help our community better navigate and represent themselves within the system. There are some recommendations that have been gathered through the report, some systemic influences or system influences that might come through government. For example, the Department of Health, DFFH, the Office of Disability. We're really encouraging them to uptake some of these recommendations and implement these things uh, on a systemic level. So I want to congratulate Deaf Victoria and the staff for the tireless efforts throughout the duration of this project. I know that it has been uh, very time consuming and lots of thought has gone into ensuring that the resources that we have are the highest quality. So once again, congratulations to everybody. And now I'd like to ask Sherry, who has been the project lead, to speak a bit more about the project in some greater detail, including what findings were found, as well as the resources that we've been fortunate to develop. So thanks very much and over to you, Sherry. Hello, everybody. My name is Sherry Beaver. I'm the project lead for this Deaf Victoria Health Advocacy Project. It's been phenomenal. Like Kathy said, it's a long-standing project. We've accomplished so much. We're working for deaf and hard of hearing people here in Victoria, and we find issues coming up time and time again to hear of individual advocacy. So with that, Deaf Victoria's continue to provide support to deaf and hard of hearing people looking for solutions to access to their health care, in particular where there are breaches. In the hospital settings, we know that it's a complicated system for deaf and hard of hearing people to navigate, particularly when you cannot call the hospital directly as a deaf or hard of hearing person, in particular if English is their second language. It's becoming increasingly difficult to find a barrier-free experience in a hospital, which is smooth sailing, which you would expect, like anyone else in Victoria, deaf and hard of hearing people are finding themselves disadvantaged, particularly when there's a lack of provision of Auslan interpreting services. So with that, the project vision and scope was to find a centralised support, high quality access to healthcare for deaf and hard of hearing people in the health system if they should present at the hospital. The project focused upon three main areas. Firstly, inpatient admissions. Secondly, obstetrics. Thirdly, emergency departments. Bear with me for one moment. We're just working something out here, a technical issue. Technology, who can 
tell. We're just quickly trying to resolve this on the fly. think we should have this resolved in one or two minutes. Just... Okay, I'm getting the thumbs up. We're good to go. Problem solved. Waiting for the next slide. That's it. Uh, a little further down. You can scroll down a little further. Thank you. That's it. So thank you very much for that. Now, where was I? Uh, project partners, the advisor group, include Expression Australia, the Health Issues Centre, Alfred Health, and Asley Victoria, Tasmania. These have been wonderful advisory group members. Uh, we've had a lot of involvement in steering committee, expert knowledge, uh, as well as a lot of input in the, from the health system to this project. The advisory group and this project has been funded by the Victorian Government Department of Fam Fairness, Families and Housing. So we thank them for this Victorian Advocacy Futures Program funding. Now, the project team uh, comprises of myself, Maxine Buxton, Catherine Dunn, Sarah Weir, Ida Rogers, and Shirley Liu. No project team, no project. Simple as that. So, wonderful job, everyone. Thank you so very much. Next slide. I want to move on to our desktop review. Aspects were engaged to do this project with us, and they did a literature review, as well as community consultation. And our literature review was undertaken. It was an extensive uh, piece of work, it looked at legislation, policy, funding models, was that interpreting services, demand, advocacy, the health sector, and other important information within health. And they've compiled an 80 page report, which is comprehensive. This is a critical document for the project. Next slide. So, what did the community tell us through our survey and consultations? We had an online survey. We had community consultation as well as one-on-one -on -one interviews. So through these three different channels, we were able to come up with uh, 138 people throughout the state of Victoria, which we're very pleased with. Uh, those 138 individuals uh, were contacted by Deaf Victoria, the health, the health stakeholders and Expression Australia. So we're really pleased with this response. See the numbers here. 124 people were involved in the online survey. And of those, 85% said when they arrived at a hospital, the service did not fit their linguistic or cultural needs. So only 25%. So the majority, being 75%, did not find that engagement with the healthcare system that they wanted. 
20% of respondents said that they didn't uh, receive an interpreter. That's a very low number. Again, the majority of deaf, hard of hearing people presenting uh, at a hospital in the healthcare system did not receive an interpreter when they expected to, the same time as their appointment. The interpreter often was organised later or arrived much later. 45% of respondents said they didn't receive enough information to help them manage, make informed decisions about their own health care. Next slide. 41% of deaf and hard of hearing respondents said that they felt confident uh, receiving information uh, from the health care system. That means a majority, 59% did not. They didn't understand, thought it was too hard, wasn't easy to navigate, didn't know where to go. 43% of respondents said they felt confident to ask for access provisions, whether it be an interpreter or other access supports. Again, the greater majority didn't have that sense of confidence to be able to ask for access, whether it's an interpreter or another form of access. They were concerned about the response from hospital staff if they did make the request. 75% said that they wanted advocacy support in regarding their experience within the healthcare setting. That's huge. Resources for the deaf community. As a part of this advocacy program, you, you may recall that we've made other similar type of graphics when mandatory masks had to be worn and what that meant for deaf and out of hearing people in the hospital. So you can now simply just download an app to let hospital staff know we require an outside interpreter, remind the hospital staff of their responsibility provide services to deaf and hearing people which are accessible. We also have made other resources for deaf and hearing people, as well as deaf and blind people. So there are different types of resources, white on black, yellow on black, different colored uh, fonts. We're trying to create a variety of resources to meet a range of needs. Next slide, please. We've also created templates for the deaf community, such as complaint letters. To make a complaint to a hospital isn't easy. There's a lot of work involved in that. We're trying to simplify that. So you can see the template here where the, the text is highlighted in yellow. You simply insert your respective details, specifics of the complaint, and then you can shoot that off to the hospital. So that te template should make it easier. That will be available on our website. So Devon Art, if you people want to make a complaint, simply can download the template, load the specific information in that's relevant to them, and then shoot that off to the hospital. Next slide, please. Now, what about resources for healthcare staff? You can see here, different information about what to do. If you do have a deaf and hearing patient, what, how are you going to book an interpreter? How to work with deaf and hearing people in the hospital? Also information about how to book an interpreter after hours. Not everything happens during business hours, right? And deaf and hearing people have experienced greater hardship when they present at a hospital after business hours because often hospital staff have told them, can't book an interpreter, it's after hours. Life doesn't stop after hours, it's 24 seven. So we're trying to enable healthcare staff to make it easier for them to do their job. We're also providing information guidance to uh, the hospital staff and administrators so they know how to easily book interpreters. Next slide, please. The next area I want to focus on is training for healthcare staff. Through Aspects, Aspects report, we identified staff that work in the healthcare setting that require training with regard to cultural competency. I'll just now their healthcare, healthcare needs are going to be met in a safe environment 
to ensure that quality health care can be provided to them just like anyone else. How to book an interpreter and why interpreters are so important to provide access to ensure that cultural and linguistic needs are met. We're going to be promoting this throughout hospitals in all of the state. This training is free of charge for a limited time. This cultural competency training is free of charge. I'll repeat that again. So if you know staff in a particular hospital, if you're watching from a particular, a particular hospital and you want to avail yourself of this cultural competency training, please contact us, providing it free to you for a limited time. Now the final important recommendations are going to be looking at improving the quality of safe health care provided to deaf and hard of hearing people in hospitals throughout the state. There are main focus areas and their initiative is focused on access and information for deaf and hard of hearing patients, also to improve and strengthen the health service system response. Thirdly, to enable initiatives that empower deaf or hard of hearing patients to fully engage in their health care management and achieve optimal health outcomes. Right. So, I now want to hand over to Maxine to continue the presentation. Maxine. Work has happened. Sorry. Okay. So a lot of work has happened behind the scenes. Sorry, I mean, sorry, Paul speaking here. I couldn't see you. Sorry, Maxine, my apologies. Could you just start again? I can see you now, Maxine. If, sorry, apologies. No problem. I'll just start again. Hello, everyone. My name is Maxine. If I haven't yet had the opportunity to meet you, nice to see you. Lovely to have you here viewing with us tonight. Thank you, Sherry, for giving us a rundown on the project today. There's been so much work involved in bringing this project together, coming to fruition. Uh, a tremendous amount of work has been done. So what I'm going to talk about now is where to from here, because the project, okay, has been delivered, but Deaf Victoria wants to maintain uh, all the great work to ensure that the resources are able to hit the mark. So we've created them, but we want to make sure that they're utilized. So from here, we're going to be distributing them, sharing them, a lot more resources through a range of different channels and options to make sure that they're available to the deaf, hard of hearing and deaf and blind members of our community. They can choose whatever resources best meet their needs. We'll still be out there reminding the hospital to ensure that the cultural competency training which is offered is taken up. So that's firstly, we're going to focus upon public hospitals because this is funded by the state government um, for public hospitals and then go to private hospitals and GPs and so on throughout the healthcare system. We're going to try and hit as many different stakeholders as possible. Deaf Victoria cannot do all of this alone. We need to work with others. We're going to be working with government, particularly the Department of Health and the hospitals, both public and private. So we're thrilled to have this opportunity to work with these key stakeholders, to have more robust conversations, to support them, to be able to provide better policies, better procedures in the delivery of accessible health care for deaf, hard of hearing and deaf blind people. This project is extremely fortunate, and you could say fortuitous, because it links in beautifully with another project happening Demonstrate. So once this project is finished and wrapped up, there's a great connection. All of the learnings from this project, the resources, particularly the research and the questions we share with Expression Australia, and I support their project continuing on. So there's a great cross pollination and benefit. It's not like one project stops and another finishes. There's great connectivity and the momentum will continue. 
advocacy service here at Deaf Victoria, which is support deaf, hard of hearing, deaf blind people throughout the state, when they contact us, when they become a client, then we can provide advocacy services to them. So if you go to a hospital and an Oz interpreter is not presented to you, or you feel as though you're not being afforded the respect and the service that you are entitled to, then please contact us. We've got a range of services. We can meet you face to face. We can provide on site advocacy support. We can provide communication support, information, and a whole lot of other services. And I think that's it for me. I'll have back now. for explaining uh, the next steps and the number of resources that we have available. It's very exciting. I know that deaf and hard of hearing community have been frustrated with the um, barriers that they've faced and the advocacy that they've had to do um, on their own behalf, but now we're looking forward to being able to really make sure that the health services are well informed and are aware of their responsibilities and requirements to provide access. So now I'd like to uh, really thank Sherry and um, talk to us a bit more about how we can use the resources, a bit more about their projects and uh, really get to thinking about, well, the consultations that have happened, some of the statistics and uh, looking forward to any questions that uh, participants might have this evening. So you can type in on Facebook or in the Q&A section on Zoom. So myself and Sherry would be very uh, pleased to speak to you about any number of resources there. Great. Thanks, Catherine. So I think we've got another exciting resource, do we not, Sherry? Yes, that's right, Catherine. So we do have another important resource that we'd like to share with you. So there are some advocacy graphics that I showed previously, but there is an additional video that is quite fantastic. We're able to show that to somebody that's speaking in sign language as well as spoken English and live captioning. Really explaining um, as a deaf person the requirement for the provision of Auslan interpreting for their medical appointments, their rights to have an interpreter, and just really reminding those healthcare professionals and the staff members that it is their responsibility to book these interpreters which uh, follows along with legislative and uh, policy requirements. So that means that a deaf person is able to show that to a healthcare professional and the video will explain it on their behalf. That's correct. So all of that information is there. Um, we have, uh, you really need to make sure that their sound is on because it is in Auslan. There is spoken English there. I know that often receptionists are uh, very busy and they might kind of not see the video, but in addition to that, the video is really not uh, designed for the deaf or hard of hearing person to look at specifically. It's really explaining to the staff members. Um, and so if we could show a screenshot of that video there. Great. So here on the screen share, we can see what the video looks like able to show a deaf person explaining to the healthcare professional or the staff member, the receptionist, whoever it might be, in Auslan, English, and live captioning, um, to really explain what this, um, what kind of provision needs to be provided. And we thought that it was important to highlight Auslan within the video to ensure that it is impactful and uh, the uptake is taken up by the healthcare professional. So we're really thrilled. and there are a number of different videos. One is uh, for deaf, one is for hard of hearing, and the other is for deaf blind. We know there are nuances um, within the access requirements of those different communities. Uh, thanks, Sherry. That's a really exciting resource. I know that all of us will read the sigh of relief being able to use this. Previously mentioned a flyer about cultural competency training. Does that mean that hospitals need to apply 
I mean, if I go to a GP or a doctor or a hospital, I can see these barriers time and time again. So I can just hand over these flyers to um, a healthcare worker. Well, that's right. Well, we will have the link there on our website by very soon, so it's able to be handed over to that the flyer. So, is there any kind of discount that's available? Yes, Captain. There is a limited number of free sessions. So, if a healthcare centre is feeling that they're unable to afford it, then they should apply in this limited time. There are a number of cultural competency sessions that we are able to provide free of charge. Um, once that limit, limited number has been exhausted, then it will be a fee service model. So please do jump on the opportunity now, get in contact with us, and we can arrange that um, as soon as you'd like. Well, thanks so much for explaining those resources to me. Well, I'm looking here at the um, Q&A, seeing if we've got any questions coming to us. Somebody has said, if a deaf or hard of hearing person is going to the hospital and feeling like their provisions aren't being met, is it possible to contact Deaf Victoria after hours? Well, myself as the individual advocate, perhaps I'm best placed to answer that. Unfortunately, Deaf Victoria does function within business hours. We are able to support clients, of course. Um, however, we're excited to be able to develop these resources to be able to be used outside of, our, um, outside of business hours. The aim is to really empower the community to use these resources. Once we get back to 9 to 5, then please do get in touch with us in Deaf Victoria. And in relation to Catherine's comment, it is important to remember that we have these resources not just for deaf and hard of hearing people to use, but also for healthcare staff to make sure that they are well versed in what they are able to provide, such as also talking with us after hours. Um, regardless of the time of day, interpreters are available. 24-7, and it is the hospital's responsibility to provide them. I think. Another question that's been sent through, saying, I know that these barriers are quite common in healthcare settings, the lack of uh, interpreters, the um, people not being aware about what they need to provide. So just to clarify, talking about masks and those sorts of things, people working in healthcare settings, what, is the, what are the legislative requirements? Are, um, healthcare professionals able to take their masks off. And yes, DFFH have said that people that require to see somebody's lips for communication, whether it be lip reading or for Auslan, then yes, people are able to take their mask off. However, social distancing or physical distancing is still required. Once that communication has been completed, then they can put their mask back on. The DFFH have said quite clearly that that is able to happen. Um, and it is listed quite clearly on their website as well. Okay, thank you. We've got another question that's come through, speaking about interpreters. We know that there are a number of um, different kinds of interpreters out there, um, like um, Auslan to English, English to Auslan, hard of hearing, uh, tactile interpreting. So um, deaf interpreters are out there as well. Can you explain to us a little bit more about that? Yes, and you can contact Deaf Victoria about the variety of different um, interpreters that are available. However, just to remind the audience that we are not an interpreter booking organisation. There are particular organisations that focus on providing interpreters. However, we can provide information about interpreters. Um, and you can contact booking offices and interpreting services for more information as well. That's right, we are an advocacy service. So, an example of what we do is if you um, are wanting to use our resources, if you are um, wanting to um, get a deaf interpreter as well as an Auslan interpreter, then really um, a booking office is the best place to be able to organise that. We know it is a new process, but it's important to make sure the community is aware. And it's really exciting to have these resources available to show the hospital what needs the deaf community has. To know that there are different options and making sure that provision um, is improving. We know there has been frustration in the past, but we're looking forward to those sorts of access barriers being removed forward. Just looking again at what kind of questions we've got here. To um, 
yeah, just looking on Facebook to see the questions coming in as well. So health advocacy, um, how can Deaf Victoria support? Well, recently advocacy services, um, we would see that the hospital is not providing interpreters, for example. So a deaf and hired hearing patient uh, is sometimes not allowed in and not able to have those access provisions sent through. So the staff at that hospital would contact us have a conversation and really make sure that the deaf person is able to get in, yes. However, it doesn't end there. Deaf Victoria continues to liaise with the hospital, just ensuring that their policies, that any future patients, should they meet another deaf person, um, we want to ensure that that access is ongoing. Which is great. Checking the team here if we have any other questions. I think we've uh, given a lot of information. I'm sure you're all absorbing it and percolating um, on the presentation this evening. And if you do want to access these resources, then get in touch with us um, at the Deaf Victoria inbox, which is info at deafvictoria.org.au or log on to our website. So I think that's it from us this evening. I'd like to invite Sarah to wrap up the presentation for tonight. However, if there are any further burning questions, then please jump on now before we wrap up. If not, I'll hand over to Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Well, I would like to uh, remind our audience that if you do require advocacy services, or whether it be for yourself, family or friends within the sector in relation to healthcare, then please don't be afraid to reach out to us at the inbox previously mentioned, info at deafvictoria.org.au. We would like to again thank our project partners, Expression Australia, Health Issues Centre, Alfred Health, Aslia Nick and Taz, as well as Aspects Consulting, who work tirelessly on the review and collating all of the research. So, great job, thanks very much. I wanted to thank our Victorian Deaf community as well for your input um, to the consultations for your feedback, for your stories, to really help lead change. We know that it's important for us to share this information to make a better path forward. So if you'd like to look at the resources and get further information about the project, it's freely available on our website. As of Monday, we'll be uploading it there, so please do have a look. We're always looking for feedback or any questions, comments that you want to send our way, so please get in touch if you have any comments about the resources. And if you'd like updates on our previous work, future work, then please look at our socials. And you can have a look at our MailChimp as well, and we'll send out a regular email subscription. So that's it from us this evening. We'll wrap up now. Hope you have a lovely evening, and we'll see you at the next which will be happening in May. As usual, keep your eyes peeled on the website, Facebook. Make sure you share these resources with your friends and community as well. Anybody that's faced any barriers out there, I'm sure they'll be thrilled to have access to these resources. Hope you've enjoyed the evening tonight, and yeah, very, thanks very much. Have a great night. Thanks all. Bye.